Let me put on one. She helps the out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Zoom call. Hello, this is Tiffany. Hi, guys. Hi, Tiffany. Hi. Hi there. Miranda just joined. Hello, Miranda. Thank you for joining. All right, guys. So I'm going to record this session as usual, just in case there's anything that you guys want to come back and review. I'll post a link on the Patreon page so that you guys can circle back if needed to. So real quick here, guys, out of everyone right now in the group, who is using the 360 booth right now? It's Tiffany, I am. I'm using a 360 booth as well. Then uh, fun photo, we, I think you use primarily photo booth, is my, am I correct? Jose? Yes, sir. Jose, have you started using the 360 booth? I, I know you have a 360 booth now, right? Or Yes. So, yes, I've been using it for, uh, I would say, almost a year. So here, here's, here's what I want to share with you guys, along with some other things. So I actually raised my prices recently. You guys are probably thinking, David, are you, are you crazy? Competition is fierce right now, and the market is drastically changing. But I bumped up my prices on both the 360 booth and the photo booth. I did it on both styles just because my values and my perspective in business is changing. And I'm going to share that perspective with you. If one of us jumps into the photo booth industry and we are looking at it like, okay, well, I want to make sure that I get bookings right away. Let me go see what Jose is doing. And then I'll go to Jose's page and I can see that Jose has a 360 booth available for two hours at $500, right? So then in my eyes, I'm thinking, okay, Jose is charging $500 for the two hours. I'm a little newer in the industry. I want to get bookings. So my strategy as a new business owner would be, let me charge $450. So that way I am $50 cheaper than Jose, right? And then more people come into the industry. And now people are looking at Jose and they're looking at me. So the other person that comes in says, I want to make sure that I'm the most affordable so that people can book with me. So then someone else is going to say, I'm going to go ahead and do $400 for a two hour session. And all of a sudden there's six members in the zoom group and we're having kind of a race to the bottom. And these are price wars and the consumer is probably getting the best rate, but the market, right. And the, the business, we're not doing what's, what's correct. So that's why I bumped up my prices because quite honestly, in my area, I do want to be the most expensive. I do want to charge a premium price because when it comes to prices, guys, it's about perception. So if you guys want to attract clients that want everything almost for free, then you're going to be stuck with clients that are uh, one, they don't show up on time. They're late with signing the contracts. That's basically who you guys are attracting. People who just don't want to pay anything, who just can't get enough of free stuff that want discounts constantly. For me, as you guys know, I've been in the, industry, in the industry close for two years now, and I want to align myself with a certain particular avatar, a client, and they're willing to pay premium pricing, and they perceive the value at the price that they're actually paying. So when they do that, now they're more emotionally tuned with who they're, who they're booking versus, and I'm just using Jose as an example. Instead of me looking at Jose's business, for example, say he's charging way cheaper than me. So then when I book Jose, I'd be like, okay, just th that was just a little bit of money that I had left over. I'm just going to throw in an affordable booth. Uh, you will go ahead and put him there in the corner. But if you are charging a premium price and that's the perceived value and you actually bring that value and confidence to the actual consumer, the, 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 your avatar, then basically you're saying we hired a high-end photo booth. We want to put them right in the center. We want to make sure that everyone uses it. So now it's, it's perception. And guys, I raised my prices for both the photo booth and the 360 booth, and I'm still being booked. So the reason I'm sharing this with you guys is because I know a lot of us have that mentality where we just want to be the most affordable so that we can get the most bookings. But quite honestly, and uh, Amber has been in the industry for a long time, so I, I just want to get her thoughts. She's been in the industry way longer than I have. My thought is we're not here to get as many people as possible, as many bookings as possible. We're here to make the most money as possible. That, that's it right there. When I had a business back, uh, I want to say over 10 years ago, 
I went into the business trying to be $5 cheaper than my competition. And I thought to myself, how's my competition charging so much money? Are they going to get any clients? So my mind, you know, zero business experience was just to get as many clients as possible so I can do as many phone repairs as possible. And I ended up with a lot of clients, a lot of volume. I had to hire someone else. But then I, I was wondering, how can that guy charge so much money? Well, that same guy that was charging so much more money, a premium price for his iPhone repairs, he was the one that was opening up more storefronts because now he had enough capital and more money coming in because he wasn't focused so much on how many people, but how much more money he was going to make. And he was, using, he was able to use the capital to scale. And I was still, let's just be honest, I was still the small timer, the small business owner, just doing get very, very busy, but not as much profit margin. So that's going to hurt how much I can pay my employees. That's also going to delay how long it's going to take me to get to a certain level in business. And so that's what I want to share with you guys today. That's just a small portion. Of, I'm going to share other things with you guys. But with that being said, when it comes to perceived value, you guys want to focus on specific who you guys want to target as your demographics and your ideal client. For me, guys, it's going to be uh, corporations, certain sectors that even if they want to pay me with an invoice, that's okay. I'm going to have to learn to trust them because they're a different type of client. And we're just going to have to move forward if even it's like it's a 30 day net and they pay me 30 days after the event, as long as they're put the deposit down. I know that I'm going to gain clients long term. One of the cool things right now, uh, another victory that I want to share with you guys is that I have a particular school that's booked me for the fourth time. I've been in business almost two years. And ever since they did business with me this year, they want more Canary Capital Rentals and more of me. And that's a huge compliment. And that just lets me know that, okay, yeah, these are the type of clients that I want. And, and they never complain about the price. So I just thought in my heart and in my mind, I wanted to motivate you guys to just reevaluate uh, one, your business plan, and then reevaluate your, your time, your value, how you value yourself. There's going to be people that jump into the industry that just want to make an extra thousand dollars a month. And that's totally fine. That's totally cool because th that's, that's their journey. That's their mission. But my mission guys is I want to make over a hundred thousand dollars with a photo booth business, just with one location. And if I can do that, that means that I can duplicate that same infrastructure, methods and strategies, and the amount of time and equipment that I have and duplicate that business and do another business. And now I'm making $200,000 with the photo booth business. So I'm not going to leave the photo booth business yet until I reach a certain goal instead of taking money out of the business right now and starting a different venture. Because as an entrepreneur, guys, I think you can all relate. We're always just trying to make one more dollar. We're always just trying to make more, more money and invest in something new. We want to get the high. We want to feel the dopamine of trying something new and having it work. That gets us excited. We work really hard. And then we are on to the next thing. That's at least my problem. That's what my problem was. That's why I had so many businesses. But I really want to focus on this business and not move away from it until I see the results that I can, I can look back and say, okay, I pushed it to the maximum. I even probably... Uh, consider doing some type of campaign or ads just to test to see that I'm not being closed minded and it can actually have somewhat of a payout. But right now, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not moving uh, in that direction. Right now, I'm working with the resources that I have and really maximizing on the resources that are at my disposal. So with that being said, just to summarize, guys, I, I want you guys to kind of evaluate the situation as far as why you guys are doing this as a photo booth business owner. It could be that you guys just want to have a good time and get paid for it. But then again, there could be another individual who is really counting on, on this to work. So we're all in different situations. And this is why we all come together here so that we can kind of uh, share our point of views. But this is just my point of view. And I'm, I'm very uh, inspired to share this with you guys. I, like I said, I boosted up my prices and I'm being booked at my higher prices. So... Uh, I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to go ahead and uh, I'll pause it right now. So uh, let's let's kind of just take a quick turn just to kind of get your feedback really quick on the on the concept. So just raise your hand. There's a little icon where you can raise your hand and then I'll select you guys. That way no one uh, interferes with your feedback. But at this moment, what, what are you guys' thoughts? We'll go ahead and start off with Tiffany. Fire away. What's up? David, so I have I just started. So last weekend, I did an event for my family, 
and I got reviews and everything back on my Google page. Um, but you know, I lowered my, my rates because here in Georgia, in Augusta, they're charging like $75 an hour, $75, $65. So I started out with 200 for two hours, 300 for three hours and 400 for four hours. So I don't know. I'm still researching. I've had a lot of traffic on Facebook, on my TikTok page, and on my Google. I've been having people reach out to me inquiring about pricing. Um, another family member asked me for September the 30th for a wedding. Um, so, you know, I'm just kind of complete because, you know, like in your group on Facebook, I, you know, I'm reading some of the comments and then I'm, you know, it's just, I don't know. He had a great time. They absolutely loved it. And I, when I tell you, I, I gave it 100, no, I gave it 1000. I did. And, um, everything was on point. I, I had, I, only thing I left out was my, my Wi-Fi, but I had Wi-Fi, they had Wi-Fi, so that was good, and I had it at our house, and it was in the backyard, and, and everything was nice, but it's just like, when it comes to the pricing, it's just, I'm kind of stuck, David, I know one girl here, she only just does one, um, one session, and I think it's like a four hours for like 600 and something dollars, but then you have someone like me that's doing two, three, or four hours. So I don't know. I truly don't know. And I want to attract the high-end clients because I know what I'm worth. Like today I bought, I bought some prop glasses and they, they look really, really nice. So I don't know. Can you give me some feedback on that? Yeah. So right, right now, the uh, it, it, so guys, uh, it, there's photo booth seasons and that's that's definite that's just a reality of it so you definitely have to strategize when we go through a certain season whether it's busy season or slow season if we go through a slow season and you guys decide to drop your prices to get the crumbs of whatever's left over for the slow season then people what happens when people actually book you far out and then busy season comes around and now you're fully booked at a lower rate and then there's people in demand that need your services that are willing to pay an extra $100, $200, but now you're booked at a lower rate. So it's just important for you to really learn your area, your demographics, your competition. If you find yourself busy uh, with events every single week, well, congratulations to you, but that might mean that you're too cheap. So you might want to bump up your prices. So it, it's really going to depend on, like I said, your demographics your way of marketing, what you project as a business, giving your website and social media, like the quality basically is what I'm referring to. Because if you are confident and you can offer your client value and they perceive that value worth that you are, you know, the fact that you're charging a hundred dollars more an hour, okay. that, that they'll be okay with. So just take a step back, Tiffany, and and do what you do best right now, right? So if, if you're hustling right now and trying to gather information and data while being compensated, meaning you're still getting events and you're get, and getting paid, just continue to see how things are changing on a month-to-month -month basis. Check out people's pricing. I really, today, I encourage you guys not to be the cheapest. In fact, like I said, I am willing to be the most expensive, the premium company here in my area. And that's that's what I'm going to roll with moving forward because I, I'm, I'm serious about my business. I know what I have to bring to the table I have plenty of experience and all of my, it's getting to a point where my clients are referring me to their friends and family and even small businesses. So that just means that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing as, as their preferred vendor. So yeah, Tiffany, everything, every location is going to be a little different given the amount of competition you have as well. Uh, but okay. thank you for sharing. Uh, thank you for sharing, Tiffany. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and congratulations on getting those reviews too, Tiffany. Thank you. I had six. Uh, very nice. Very sweet. So I had someone else. I think it was Jose. Jose, did you raise your hand earlier, brother? I did, but, but I, I want to let everybody talk first. All right, sweet. Yeah, who see and anybody else? I don't, I don't see any hands. I have a quick question. Miranda, uh, go ahead. Carmel, go ahead, Carmel. Miranda, I'll come right back to you. So um, this would be my first event. Um, I was asked to bring the 360 roof to an event that a family member is hosting. Sorry, who's my dog? And since this would be my first event, I was wondering, has anyone had experience with charging for spins? 
And do y'all think that it's a good idea since it's going to be outside? I guess that's my first event. Um, I just want to make sure I'm going about it the right way. And if it's even worth my time. I'll, I'll be more than happy to, to give you an answer. But before I do, does anyone want to uh, help out Carmel with that? This is Miranda. So right. while I don't have any experience with charging for pay per spin, I have been asked to do that. And I think it, it depends on what your business model is and what your objective is. When I was asked to do that, I, I declined and I said, I'm going for a certain type of clientele. And me personally, I just felt like it would degrade the service that I'm offering by doing a pay per spin. I would prefer for someone to book me in my package. It's totally just my opinion versus doing a pay per spin. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, so a few things like Miranda said is what you what, what you're shooting for. What's your personal mission? How do you want to structure your business? If this is your very first event and there's potential that you can make maybe a couple hundred dollars just to go out there and get familiar with the unloading, the setting up, how long it would take you, calibrate your camera, angle everything correctly, just get familiar with the process to build confidence because your first event is always going to be that confident booster, that first event after that. <laughs> When you get an event that's 200 people plus, that's like the next level of a confidence booster. And it goes on and on. So if you want to go out there and charge per spin just to kind of get out there, get comfortable with your equipment and how long it's taking you to set up and take down and capture as much content as possible, pictures and videos that you can use to promote your business, then that's a strategy right there on its own. But I also know other individuals like in the San Diego area that go out to like by the beach and they just charge per spin and they enjoy doing it, that's their personality, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't charge per spin. I, I wouldn't do free events for influencers who have a million followers. I don't care about their followers. I care about my bank account. So uh, <laughs> it, it, it's True. totally up to you, Carmel. So this is your business. This is reflection of your personality, but just remain curious enough to have an open mind and try new things out. So yeah, uh, just roll with that. If you want to charge per spin, go for it. Just make sure you make the best out of it go out there and build some experience and confidence yeah that would be the only reason that's my main reason as to why i would do it just solely for the experience and just to see um but i'm on the same page as you and miranda other than that that's not necessarily how i want to run my business i also want to um like tiffany said i want higher end clients i've made flyers i've used your content we just launched our facebook page and our tiktok page and our instagram page and i've looked at what the going rate is in my area and it's to me it's too low it's your time it's a business so i'm trying to market myself to be a little bit higher than what they are because when we do have a boom season i don't want to have to be like man i wish mm -hmm. i was charging yeah. this when i have to you know push it for that but thank y'all so much i really appreciate it Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that cool question. And then I know Jose wants to ask a question, but he's waiting for everyone first. He's being a gentleman. A anybody else uh, want to contribute or have a point they want to bring up? I think Miranda has the, hey, the hands up. I think Miranda, yeah, Miranda's, the, are, are you still, the, is there something to, uh, on your mind still, Miranda? I know yeah, you just I, went. I did, did have a question about um, your price increase. Do you mind sharing how much did you increase your prices by? And I, I'm average about $100. All right. We have uh, iPad number two. I think it's Amber though, right? It's set up that way. I'm sorry. What's um, up, Amber? I was kind of thinking like for Kamel, you said this is your first event, right? Yes. What type of event is it? It is an outdoor picnic for a motorcycle club. Okay. Um, and they just don't want to pay you for the service. They want you to come set up and then charge their guests to spend on it. Yeah. I mean, I've done stuff like I'm big into trying to do things for like nonprofits and mm -hmm. kind of give back and donating my booth for those types of things. I've actually got a lot of gigs off of doing that kind of thing. I want to really be, I've never done pay per spin. I'm just kind of getting more into the 360 now and booking the more. I've done the classic print booths. I passed what since 2015, eight years. So I've been doing all the print booths. I'm trying to get more into the social drop offs, but. And get you some more exposure. I yeah. don't, don't see to be opposed to that, especially the practice and learn how to use and function it. If you're going to a fair or something and you want to do pay for spin, I think that's a great place to do it at yeah. a fair. 
because then you're getting your name out there and your business out there and it gives people some fun to try out. I don't think that really values the brand personally. Um, I did notice recently, <laughs> I actually did a gig for the Columbus Blue Jackets, some captain for his wedding, didn't even know who it was. And I would say that the worst thing that the wedding planner said to me was, you're really affordable. Oh. So I think it's my prices. <laughs> I was the only photo booth in the Columbus area they could find that would do printing. And then they loved me. I loved my service. When she's like, you're really affordable. I'm like, yeah, I just found out you paid half a million dollars for this wedding. But that's not exactly my normal clientele because I'm more outside of Columbus. So I, I think I will be raising my, my prices here soon. <laughs> Yes. And I, I've noticed when you do stuff for people, when you get the client, you just want it a couple hundred dollars, they will want everything mm -hmm. and they will pay for nothing. So you got to watch out for that too on the cheap end because the people who want it free, they want it free and they yeah. won't really value your service. The people who value your service will pay your fee regardless of what it is. So I kind of ramp on that one. Thank you. Welcome. So real quick too, um, as, as Amber stated, some of those things, I, I just remembered one thing, Carmel, if, they, they want to have you on there and they, they say, well, you can charge per spin. Just make sure that the, your overlay is for you, for your business. So in that overlay, have a QR code that'll, that they can scan. That'll take them directly to your website and your QR um, in your overlay, have your contact phone number. Like this is your like promotion. Um, so take advantage of that overlay. Cause when they go to post those videos on social media, the overlay has all your information. So that's like your virtual slash business card out there floating on social media so that's smart hey I david I, that. I just want to chime in about this um this tiffany so what i did i put dream catchers um photo booth rentals llc at the bottom of my overlay and everybody loves it so mm -hmm. if you're on if you're on david's um in the group my name is tiffany smith and i posted um it was a football theme over the weekend, so they had the college day, and so I posted it. But at the bottom of it, it has Dream Catcher, so that way everybody will know my business name. That's a that's another good one. Like David does, he puts his logo on the overlay. I did the same thing, but you got this, girl. Thank I was you. nervous. You're welcome. I was nervous and all, but I promise you. And like, I love to have fun. So, and I love to make people laugh and I'm such a people person. So I, mentally, I made a to-do list in my head and I had everything charged up, everything ready to go. And I had everything packed the day before. So if you do that and don't rush, you, you will do fine. Okay. Okay. And then also make sure that you have extension cords just in case they don't have extension cords. Oh, yes. We live with okay. extension cords we have them in every room of the house and I, i'm a teacher so i have tons all right cool but you thank got you. this though thank you're you. welcome let us know how it goes thank you you're thank, thank you um, guys. I, 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 I have i have katina too she uh, is raising her hand so go ahead katina go ahead fire away hello can you hear me loud and clear okay yeah i was wanting to say that I did a paper spin um, when I, I first started my business and I did it absolutely for free. I charged, it was only like $10 um, a per spin. Need to say, I, I didn't even make $100. So, but the more the story is that the same person asked me to do it again for another event because she has different events. And I told her, oh yeah, I would do it sure. If you're going to charge, uh, I mean, if, if you're going to pay for my, um, my um, fees for, for my app, she said, like, oh, how much is that? And I'm like, oh, I'm like, $100. And also, you know, I, I, how um, I, I did the same thing. I said, everything would be, it would be my, my, my overlay. It would not be your overlay. She was like, oh, okay, well, let me think about it. And then I never heard from her again. So the more the story is, is that, you know, you know, someone just say, if you would let somebody say, you know, use you one time, they always want to use you over and over again. So you got to be smart about it. You got to know up front. Yeah, I'll do a, a paper spin, but you have to have your stipulations. You're still going to give them a contract because you're going to keep them like any, any other business. And you're still going to, you know, like I said, if, you, if, you're, if you're beginning, you want that experience, you want that exposure. So it's not the wrong way, but make sure that you get money for something. Don't go in and not not get money for, for anything. And, and, but, and but yeah, because you know that you're going to spend money you paying for the app. So hmm. Okay, thank you. I'll definitely keep that in mind. Thank you, Katina. All right, Jose, we're ready for you, bro. Let me go ahead and uh, unmute you right here. 
go ahead and hit the unmute there, Jose. Thank you, guys. So um, I remember one of the videos that uh, David mentioned that when you start, he was uh, advising us to like uh, try to use their family and practice practice on your family, you know, like on the photo booth, how to operate the photo booth, make sure the everything you're, um, you know how to handle it. So you don't have that, you're not practicing with the customers, you know, so that way you don't look bad in front of the customer and you don't have that, uh, you have more knowledge. So that was my first advice, you know, like focus to try to practice at home and don't practice at the customer or the event. Um, work on the presentation. So I've been doing photography for more than 15 years. And um, the, my first seven years, I did struggle a lot because I had a lot of competition. My price were really, really cheap. It was, I think I was charging like $1,200 photo and video and customer were complaining. It was like, I got sick and tired of, you know, like um, arguing with the customer with the price. So I decided to stop and invest on my, on my knowledge. So I went and got private classes, one and one. I spent over $10,000 in hiring photographers to come to my house and pay them $3,000 for three days. I got one photographer from California, another one from Costa Rica, and then I hired another one from, um, so I did spend a lot of money. And then um, I did give my my work for free for almost a year uh, with someone that did a show, Quinceañeras, how to dance. And, and I did it for free for almost a year in order to get enough material to show my work. And after that year, I talked to the guy and I told him, hey, thank you for everything. For, from now on, if you want a photo shoot from me, it's going to cost you $600. And that was the last time that I worked with him. So that was my mentality. You know? So then when I started the photo, the, I started the photo booth business, the standard regular, you know, I bought one of the most expensive at the time photo booth. That was maybe like five years ago. And what I like about that company is that when I bought it, it was expensive. I remember I used two credit cards, um, $7,000 for buying the photo booth. And what I like about them is that they gave me all the materials, all the pictures. They helped me to be able to, they gave me a video too. And I was able to start my website you know, with, with good materials and I was able to charge decent price. When I started the 360 photo booth, um, I, I didn't know David. Yet. So when I saw his video and it started, I wanted to get out of my body and kick myself because <laughs> the price that he was showing and the price that I bought the photo booth, it was crazy because I bought my photo booth for $8,000 from Revo Speed. So he's laughing right now, but it's true. I bought it for $8,000. And then like a month later, I found David and David was showing the same photo booth for like $1,500. And I was like, oh my God, that was like a year ago. And I was like, ah, uh, no, I'm going to give up. And then people here in Vegas didn't want to pay. They wanted like $400 for two hours. And I was like, I don't know what to do. So what I did is did before, I try to focus to have really nice website, really nice videos, really nice work on that. And to be able to have everything on the website so customers don't have to call me and ask me questions. It's everything there. If they call me, it's going to be because they want to book with me. And I have my prices there. I don't hide it, you know. So this way I filter I feel to those cheapest, those cheapest customers that they don't want to pay. They can't afford my prices. It's fine. Uh, time is value. So I feel like, okay, so if they're going to reach out to me and they want my price and they're willing to pay that price, it, it's fine. So I can say now that I was uh, with all the events that I have now, I was able to pay it off the, the, the photo booth. So, and now I'm trying to focus and learn, you know, more about how can I, get my business grow uh, with Google. I did wedding wire for a year, two years, paying almost $200, $300 a month. Then I tried Yelp. 
Um, and then when um, Davey came up with the Patreon, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna close those doors marketing that actually they were not working. I was getting fake phone calls, fake phone calls from Wedding Wire. And I did talk to the, the people and um, they couldn't be able to help me. They didn't help me. They, they never answered me back. So I'm done paying for marketing and now I'm more focusing on, on Google and try to get my business grow that way. After my first uh, 15 minutes that I have with David, now my my uh, Google is showing in one of the in my first first page now, so you know uh, I think this is value what we get through David. Thank you, Jose. I'm glad I saved you for last. <laughs> this is a uh, good information. There's a lot to take away from what Jose talked about. One of the things that stood out to me the most is sometimes it's a better idea that if you have the money, you pay for speed, acceleration to learn. And Jose, what he did is he uh, he invested in his company by do, paying other folks to bring his business to a certain level so that people can see his business at a certain val value. And this goes back to value perception. And, and Jose is like the kind of guy that he's willing to spend the money. He's willing to invest. And it's so important that guys that whenever we're ready to make pay, pay someone or pay for a service that we know exactly, you took our time to be diligent and do some market research so that at the same time, we're not overpaying. And it's always good to get, it's always good to get two to three, um, you know, quotes, whether it's a service or a product that we're interested in getting. So uh, thank you, Jose, for even, even sharing that part that, that seems like, man, uh, it sucks, but you know, it, it's a, it's a it's part of the learning curve sometimes. So, and then, and then Jose also brought up the, the Google guys really quick. What I want to do with you here, uh, Katina, I'm going to go ahead and mute you right here real fast. Real quick, guys, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to share my screen because Jose just reminded me about Google. So let me go ahead and move this. Just to show you guys, I run weekly scans. So for the keyword on August the 30th for 360 photo booth, I was ranking at 8.42. And then about a week later here, so 7th, I'm at 8.25. So anything that you guys measure in life uh, will improve as you're, you're constantly focused on and whatever you focus on, it, it improves, it grows. You're, 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 you're like a laser, you know, um, you're focused on one thing. And so I know it's not a huge difference, but I do want to show you guys that little by little, maybe by next month, I'll be probably at a seven. So I'll go from an 8.42 to a seven, which, which means that these areas are going to be more green for me, which means that I'm going to be on the top of the Google page for the search word 360 photo booth and even further out than where I'm at right now. And that to me is more business. So just uh, I'm glad Jose brought up the Google because I just remembered I wanted to share this with you guys. Um, for the tier two members, I do a local scan for you guys on a monthly basis and we get on a 15 minute Zoom call. So if you guys are tier two and we haven't had our meeting, just message me, uh, message me on the Patreon page so that I can send you the information so we can get on this 15 minute Zoom call, run a scan on your Google business profile. Just a quick reminder for everyone because uh, for the tier two members, there was supposed to be an automatic message that you guys would get with those instructions, but for some reason it's not being pushed through automatically like it should be. So I uh, wanted to bring this up to you guys right now. There, yeah, just wanted to show you that on Google. So we have uh, Eric just joined. Uh, we have Ivan now. And so really quick, guys, we're just talking about how we, I was just showing how I'm just bumping up my prices. I want to attract a certain client. I want to be compensated for my time differently. I don't want to compete with everyone who's lowering their prices. And so we want to attract a certain avatar, a particular client that we feel is a good match for our business and our long-term mission, which is to scale and grow our business. And we can't do that by being the cheapest or the third cheapest in our, in our area. We want to be the, like I said, we want to be charging the premium price. Really quick guys. So for everyone that's using the 360 booth, because I'm also keeping my price, you know, up here, I also want to make sure that my quality is by far the best quality. So I've been looking into different things. And one of them was, I'll show you. This is a this this is a Canon R7. This camera's worth $1,500, not including this lens. I had a larger lens on it. And 
when I reach out to my manufacturer, I ask them if they can send me a arm that's going to be a lot more stable and reinforced so that I can capture 360 videos using a Canon R7, which is going to give me the, the videos that I think you probably guys seen in the past. And these videos were just shot here in the house. The quality was crazy. It's like amazing. But because this is a crop sensor, the video, it was only getting the people's, the, the my head and like my lower waist. And so to extend this further out, it pulls a lot of strain on the arm. Plus, this is a lot of weight. The U200 light plus this plus the iPad. So I'm looking for alternatives right now to still have the best quality in the industry. And now I'm looking into the I'm looking into the uh, GoPro GoPro 10, 11, and the 12. What I like the hero. Have you tried the Hero? Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking. About. Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about right now, Jose. So the the Hero, the GoPro 10 Hero. What I like about that specific model, it has face detection. So as it's spinning, it'll really focus on their faces. And some of you guys that seen other people's videos that are shaky, just know that these GoPros guys were designed specifically with great stabilizers, embedded integrated stabilizers. That's why people that do Red Bull, uh, people that do uh, biking, motocrossing, all that stuff, they use GoPros just because it helps with the stabilization. So as, as I dive more into it and I better my production, I'm going to share everything that uh, didn't work for me, but most importantly, the things that actually worked for me so that you guys can improve your 360 booth production as well. Uh, and also, hopefully that trickles down into the photography, because as some of you guys know, I did buy, I did buy a DSLR photo booth not too long ago. I, on, I, um, I have it assembled, but I haven't really put it to work. Like I haven't really making the time to like really test it, but I'm going to be using a Canon R7 inside of that booth, along with a 600 watt flash to have those premium photos because I want to target weddings. You know, weddings usually have larger budgets, so I want to target weddings, and I'm also going to find a way to do it with keywords, not just with my website, but everything that I post to somehow funnel those weddings that are upcoming, and and, and I'm going to do more and more weddings, guys, because that's where the money is at um, again. But uh, let's see. We're 48 minutes into the Zoom call, guys. I had it for 45 minutes, but since, you know, there's a good amount of us here and a lot of you guys are contributing with some great, you know, experience. Does does any have any topic they want to bring up that they that they they definitely find uh, relevant right now, given the times in this industry? Once I want to say, um, do you have um anybody else here from um New York? New York, you know, I'm not sure. Is anyone right here from New York? No. Okay, because I was asking because I'm trying to find 360 people who's um in New York so that. I could collaborate with, with them and, you know, get a change ideas, get a change, you know, you know, strengths and struggles and, you know, information and you can, you know, help each other when somebody you know, is booked and, you know, they need, you know, to send somebody else, else to, um, to cover, cover that event. And I don't know why it's like so hard. Like I'm finding more people, you know, on the outskirts of New York, but, but, you know, or, or people actually yeah, live, live on the outskirts of New York, but they drive into New York City to, to do events, which is, I don't know, it's, it's, it's so crazy. But I think I think also too because it's um it's like back to school time. It's been like well, for, for me it's been like 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 very slow. You know I'm I'm doing a, a wedding tomorrow, but um yeah I thought the summertime would be more um busy, but it, it, it has not. And then I wanted to say about the um retro where, where he bought, where Jose bought his um the T sixty from. I thought I thought they had they had they had a, a a full service there Jose, but they help you out do marketing and promoting and everything. They didn't give you all, all those services? So basically, I feel like um, I bought a car from a dealer. And not only oh, me, I know I... that um, when you buy the car, once you sign, the guy who sell you the car, you don't see him again. Right. Same, same thing happened with RevoSpin. And I was u- using their software for the software for a while. Yeah, and, I tried. And, and, and what happened is that they're so I feel like it's bad because um, they have their logo. So our customer were calling their company and mm-hmm. all their employees, they have photo booths. So they were doing their business, you know? So wow. I feel like, I feel like that's like, I don't feel as honest. Someone, a, no. a, this company, you know, they do that, you know? So that's horrible. what I was going to ask David is that, um, 
Would you think that it would be a good idea if we all share our our website or so we can our info so that way if we have any question we can help each other? So when, when it comes to the the websites, one benefit would be that if, for example, I if you have my link in your website and I have your website URL embedded in my website, then that gives your website uh, a citation. And what it what that does is it acts backlink. So that helps your website rank because another website's pointing to your website. And what's good about it is because we are all in the same industry, then it's relevant given that we're all photo boothers. So that would be, uh, we would have to, for example, come up with a little section in our website where it says, for example, like preferred vendors and then have, like I would have Jose's uh, website and then next to it, I would put preferred vendor in, in Las Vegas, Nevada. And then just have like a list of everyone's website with their, where they're located. And that would benefit, that would benefit us because like, it's, it's just a thing that a lot of people do, but I'm too lazy to call every individual and say, Hey, can you put my link in your website? So, but yeah, that's definitely something that helps your website rank. Damn. Yeah. I I'm, I'm willing to do it with a group on my website. So on the on the Patreon page, guys, what is everyone that wants to participate, just go ahead and list uh put, put your URL and the, the city and that you're in. And like I said, whoever wants to contribute and be part of that, then it'll it'll be open to whoever wants to do that. Um, I would have to make time to actually go on my website and make a section where it looks looks it still looks professional. It just doesn't look like something I just put in the corner just to, to just to have. Um but yeah, it would. I would have to build a page revolving around that and probably promote that idea so that other people can do it and it'll be really beneficial because if it's only one, two or three people, it, it's just not worth it for me. Yeah. So guys, uh, let's, let's wrap it up. Before we wrap it, I'm going to ask you guys really quick before I let you guys go, I'm going to put you guys on the spot um, so I can get a pulse for the uh, photo booth. I'll start off with Eric. Eric, uh, can you hear me? Hey, David. Yeah, I can hear you. Eric, uh, remind us what's what city and state are you in? I'm in uh, Modesto, California. Modesto, California. How, how's uh, September bookings looking for you, man? Uh, I think it's probably my busiest month. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I got a lot of bookings. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Eric. What about you, Ivan? I'm um, right here in. Uh, my name is Ivan Orange County uh, for the booth Thunder Three Sixty. And uh, last month we were busy every weekend, but September was pretty much slow. I have one event only. I've been getting a lot of inquiries uh, through uh, my Instagram, which uh, they're actually for next year. And I guess that's not something I would want to ask maybe in the next meeting. How can we go towards about do we do we upcharge for next year? Do we keep the same price? How can we close the deal and have them not shop around so much? Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely uh, this one's kind of slow for us. Uh, we're getting some inquiries for next year and hoping for the best for next month. Got it. Yeah, Ivan, mean, that's a good topic to bring up, man. That's definitely, yeah. Th thank you for the idea. I think that's 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 dope. Uh, Tiffany, what about you, Tiffany? It's Tiffany. So, like I said, I'm from Augusta, Georgia. Well, I live in Evans, Georgia. It's like 10 minutes away from Augusta. Well, I, I did my first event with my family last week. I, you know, received reviews on my Google Um a lot of my family members and everybody, you know, they shared it and everything. So it's like, it's a little bit by little bit as far as progression for me. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of traffic on my website and other social media platforms. So my next step is to decide, okay, like you said about the pricing. So I was thinking more so alone to drop the two hour and just keep the three hour and the four hours. So I don't know. I'm still just trying to debate on um, what I, because I always want to aim for high. Here in my, in my city, I know a lot. I have a lot. When I say it's saturated, it's really bad. It's really bad. Um, so I don't know. So I'm going to continue to keep doing research. Like you said, go to other competitors' pages, look at their pages, and then just go from there. That's what I'm going to do. But one thing about me, I, I really don't care about competitors because it doesn't matter if it's 100 competitors. I don't care. I'm very friendly. I know what I'm offering. Um, my quality was great for me. For, you know, for my first event to be a success, I didn't have any 
my videos wasn't shaky or anything. I did exactly what you told me to do with Snap It with the um the recording times and everything turned out great. And so my biggest thing is I believe in me and I know what I bring to the table. That's fire right so, there. Thank thank you, Tiffany. You're welcome. Thank you guys. So let's see. So September, okay. So on September, uh, Amber, how's it look for you in September? I'm actually pretty booked out for September. It's pretty busy for me. I do a lot of homecomings. So this yeah. is like homecoming season, but I'm also starting to book more corporate gigs. I got one with Intel coming up and a few other things. And then I'm super excited because a local venue contacted me today. They're doing an expo for businesses in the area to find vendors for Christmas parties. So I'm super excited about that one. She says I can bring whatever I want to. So I'm going to take the 360 and the print booth to that. So I can hopefully start booking up December for some Christmas parties for some holiday stuff. And currently trying to revamp my website and rebrand everything right now. So website's kind of crappy until I get finished. Amber, what where, where state are you? And what's oh, the... I am just outside of Columbus, Ohio. What's the name of your your company? Big City Photo Booth. Hey, really quick, guys. Um, so reach out to all of your schools that are nearby. And and uh, when homecoming's coming up, you definitely want to say, hey, I'm only a few miles away. I would be delighted to get all your students on my platform for your homecomings. Once I think I mentioned this earlier in the talk. I have a, a school now that I consider now a long-term client. Um, they've used me three times this year, and now I'm going to be doing their homecoming. So how awesome is that? They want the 360 booth and the photo booth again. So right off the top, I can tell you guys, it's just for that event alone, I'm going to be making a little over $1,200. So I encourage you guys to sometimes, you know, just go take that extra step, get out of your comfort zone. If if it's socially awkward for you, just do it. Pick up the phone, call the school. I think you, what you guys want to do is want to reach out to the um, events coordinator at the school or the president and just introduce yourself and, and give them the idea like, hey, guys, we, we want to do your homecoming. And if you guys can get in and you guys make a really good impression, now you guys can uh, do probably most of the events that they have throughout the year. So schools are a really good uh, client to have. OK, guys, just uh, want to throw that out there. Um, Jose, how is September looking for you, sir? I got like uh, five events with the nice. 360 and the standard photo booth. But uh, yeah, this month is is more easier for me. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I think some of us, I think we all are echoing the same thing. September is definitely a busier month. And then Katina, Katina, did you get started already? You, you're started already, right? You're operating. I started um, um, June uh, 18 last year. How's September looking for you as far as bookings go, Katina? I only have one so far for tomorrow, a wedding. Beautiful. Okay. And what city and state are you in again? I'm in the Bronx, New York. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap it up. And so what I'm going to do is, um, as usual, I'm going to download this, let it render, and then upload it to YouTube and post a link on our Patreon page. Some really cool conversations today. I'm thinking of uh, having our next meeting either on the 16th or on the 17th. And then I also want to have a meeting where all of us can say we are crazy booked, uh, not just September, but other important uh, months, which for us is every single month. Uh, but yeah, September is busy for most of us. It looks like we're picking up. We'll, um, we'll continue sharing on our next call. But thank you for everyone who made it today and for participating and just uh, for your support as well. Uh, thank you for sharing the knowledge and uh, just being professional and also remaining ambitious and innovative. Thank you, guys. Thank you as well, David. Right, thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, you all. Have a great, uh, rest of your weekend. Thank you, guys.